The MCP or Model Context Protocol by Anthropic is now a widely used method to supercharge your LLM by giving it access to the whole world. Have a Slack workspace that you want LLM to access? Connect a Slack MCP and the LLM has access to your Slack workspace. Want to know about real-time updates of a flight? Connect a web search MCP and that's it. Gone are the days of writing custom code for everything or writing third-party API wrappers to support your code base and then getting into the hassle of maintaining the integration with feature updates and version changes. The MCP protocol version has three major components. The MCP host, which is your application. The MCP server, which is the actual code that does the action required of talking to third-party services. And the MCP client running inside your host, which is connecting to the MCP server. Your application might be using several MCP clients, each connecting to different or same server type. For example, our cursor coding app will be running with two MCP clients connected to Slack and GitHub MCP server via the internet. If the cursor agent is told to resolve the issue, it connects to Slack and get to see the issue mentioned in one of the Slack workspace groups and checks the GitHub code base for potential issues. Internally, these MCPs are connected to collectively resolve the issue. Now let's get into the internals of how it's done in practice. The MCP architecture consists of the data layer and the transport layer. The data layer takes care of encoding the information in a known format. The data packets are in JSON RPC format. In JSON RPC, we clearly define the methods and the parameters needed as the input. Call to function is made using the RPC protocol. RPC location might be on the same process in code and can also be in another part of the world. MCP uses this JSON RPC format for the message structure and semantics. For sending and receiving these messages, the protocol MCP has a well-defined transport layer. The transport layer is responsible in transferring the data between the MCP client and the MCP server and make it available to the underlying application, also called as the MCP host. Transport layer has two different options and it depends on your application, which version suits you the best for your use case. We have streamable HTTP transport, like our previous visual, the communication between the MCP client to MCP server uses simple HTTP POST request for message transfer. This also gives the option of streaming capabilities using server sent events, which we will discuss later. The other option is standard IO transport. This is a local version of communication between processes on the same machine. This enables the MCP server to not be outside the MCP host application, but it can be launched inside it. At the end, the code which was supposed to be executed by the MCP server is run as a process and the communication by the client happens via simple input-output streams. The way both are different is the MCP server execution context. In simple terms, on one end, the code is run as a remote server ready to take in HTTP request and response in a fixed format. On the other end, the same code is directly run and executed in the machine and response is captured. Both have their pros and cons. While STDIO gives advantages of removing the heavy network calls, the MCP code is heavyweight and if that's the case, it might bloat and slow down the whole application, which is not the case in streamable HTTP where both applications are deployed and scaled separately. Standard IO makes the whole process simple with one less service to maintain. But on the other hand, MCP server when deployed remotely can be shared by multiple applications. Now let's see how this interaction takes place between MCP client and MCP server. If you look at the sequence diagram, in standard IO, we start by launching a sub process. This starts up the application internally. We then provide input in JSON RPC format using standard input. The app runs and provides the response in standard out. This input output exchange can happen multiple times for multiple requests. Finally, the application can be closed and terminated. In the case of streamable HTTP, the protocol defines a strict set of rules. MCP server exposes a fixed endpoint, let's say slash MCP, and client can connect to it only via post and get HTTP methods. The client tells the server what kind of response it is looking for. It can be a full response or a stream of text, just like we see in LLM output these days. The type of event in which they talk with each other can be a request, a response of a previous request, or a notification. Let's see this better using a sequence diagram. The client first sends a post initialization request. The client and server may be working on different protocol versions. This is negotiated and finalized based on the capability that they provide. 
API endpoint security in this case can be anything that HTTP supports, such as using headers like basic API keys or JWT based OAuth scenarios. After this, clients can send requests and can get back responses in one go or multiple chunks of data as response streams. The client can also send notification of updates or responses to previous requests. The server has no data to send and simply responds back with a 202 acknowledgement. The server can also initiate messages first and not always have to respond to the client. This is done via a get request sent first, creating a persistent open connection that is kept intact. In future, the server can then use it to send messages to the server whenever required and the request doesn't need to be initiated from the client like before. In MCP protocol, this data and transport layer architecture opens the door for a lot of capabilities that are defined as client and server primitives. On one hand, the MCP server exposes features like prompts, which can give suggestions to the client to use some set of prompt templates with a list of suggested parameters that are useful for the prompt. For example, a reservation MCP server can suggest some flight reservation prompt with arguments asking for the start and final destination. We also have resources which enables giving the AI access to relevant data. This could be things like the weather report, location information. Finally, we have tools for the AI to perform some actions such as booking a flight ticket, update the calendar with travel dates, etc. In the same way, the MCP client also exposes features to the MCP server. We have sampling where the MCP server doesn't have an LLM inside it, it can still call the MCP client to provide it with LLM completions. The MCP client on the host machine has access to the LLM and can also connect and confirm with the end user if the action needs to be taken. We then have routes, which on the other hand tells the MCP server more about the client's file system and permission. This helps the server to know the workspace the client is on. And finally, we have elicitation. This is an important feature that enables the MCP server to gather information on demand from the end user. For example, during a flight booking tool action, the MCP server can ask if the total amount and the trip, trip details are fine for the user. The user can then confirm the detail and the MCP server can continue from where it left off and do the final travel booking. This was all for this video. In the upcoming videos on the MCP playlist, we will implement these features in Python using the MCP SDK and see all of this in action. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos on AI.